Narcissists talk and talk and talk, but what are six things that you can definitely count on any narcissist to say? I'm gonna be talking about that in this video. Hey there. I'm Rebecca Zong, and I am a narcissist negotiation expert. I am also an attorney. I've been recognized by U.S. News as a best lawyer in America. And if you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell because I release brand new videos every single day to help you grab your power help you shift that dynamic and make sure that you can go from that life of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into freedom, possibility, and purpose. And if you are coming back here, welcome back. I am so glad that you are here. We are creating our own Slay Nation, our own community of people who are getting together, banding together to create our own revolution, to rise up our own community of empath. All right, so six things that you can count on a narcissist to say. And I go over this in my brand new book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. And if you don't have that, you can get that at slaythebully.com at that website. If you order the book, you will get a whole huge masterclass and a workbook and all kinds of really cool things. So make sure you go to slaythebullybook.com and get that. So six things you can count on a narcissist to say. One of the things that they'll say is, I never said that. That is a form of gaslighting. Gaslighting is a way that all narcissists use to destabilize you, to make you think that you're crazy, to get you to doubt your own reality to manipulate you, to get you to make you think that what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you taste, what you saw, your senses aren't your senses. And they do that. First of all, they don't want to have to take responsibility for anything, but they also want to take control of you. It is used by all forms of narcissists, whether they're covert, overt, malignant, they all use it. And it's a way to deny their actions and make you more dependent on their truth and not your truth. One of the first things that you have to do in order to combat gaslighting is to create boundaries. I would say step one, don't run. Step two, make a U-turn. Step three, break free. It's all part of my slay method strategy, leverage, anticipate, and you turning that ship around, turning that ship around. And if you are dealing with a narcissist in a negotiation capacity, go to winmynegotiation.com, get my free ebook. It's a free crush my negotiation prep worksheet. Get that right now. It has helped literally hundreds of thousands of people at this point win their negotiations. It's a free 15 page ebook. So get that now. The second thing that all narcissists say is you're too sensitive. It's a way to divert their attention away from their behavior, placing blame on you, on your reaction, claiming that you're too sensitive. They invalidate your emotions and making it seem like you're the issue, not them. So if you're hurt by a comment about your appearance, and, and in, instead of expressing remorse, they'll argue that you're you're the one who's overly emotional. If you're upset about them being late or something that they did, they dismiss your emotions, suggesting that you overreact. You overreact. You're too sensitive. And again, this is actually another form of gaslighting, by the way. And in my new book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win, I actually talk a lot about this as well. This is why it's so difficult to negotiate with them, so difficult to communicate with them. If you're so over it, put so over it in the comments. Because I, I know you guys are so over it. You're so ready to move forward and take back your power, take back your life as you should be. Okay. So number three is nobody else thinks that nobody else thinks that this is the whole, you know, everybody else thinks nobody else thinks it's a way of 
lining up flying monkeys, a way of smearing you. Here, they're trying to isolate you, making you think that they've got all these people on their side and this whole army of people and you're the only one that thinks something. Oh my God, I should never leave them because if I do, they've got all these people against me already. I'm never going to win. And I know that many times as an attorney, people would come in and go, are you strong enough? Are you strong enough to be up against this person? They were afraid that even I would be snowed by this person, right? They really think that everybody is going to believe this narcissist. And they say it with such power, such conviction, such confidence. And that is something that you can do too. If you say something with such power, such conviction, you know, my father used to say, whatever you say, say it with authority and people will believe you, right? Make sure that you do the same thing. If you're feeling powerless, if you're feeling paranoid, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling blue, make sure you get the help and support that you need. If you need access to therapy, get the therapy that you need. And if you want one online, if you don't have that help, we have a sponsor on this channel. It's BetterHelp. You can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung. We receive commissions on that because it is a sponsor on this channel. It doesn't cost you any extra, but we just want you to have access to help and support that you can trust. And we do also have a, an amazing support group here, which you can go to, which is Narcissist Negotiators with, with Rebecca Zung that is on Facebook. And the link is below if you want to find that. The next thing that they say is you're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. By implying that you're overthinking it, they're like diminishing your emotions. They're basically saying you're irrational. What you're thinking doesn't matter. What you're thinking is not right. What you're thinking is not correct. It doesn't mean anything. If you're concerned about they're not spending enough time with you, you're overthinking it, you're overanalyzing it. When you comment on their behavior with somebody, the heart is like 20 seconds ahead of the brain. Most of the time, your intuition is exactly correct. If you're feeling like mm, something is off, it probably is. That's number four. Number five is something similar to you're just jealous. You're just jealous. Their statement deflects from their action to your emotions and painting you as insecure. And they're trying to make you feel like you're insecure, you're just jealous. And instead of addressing your concerns and saying, hey, I don't want you to feel this way. What can I do to make you feel more comfortable? Let's discuss this. Immediately just say you're just jealous. And they just immediately dismiss you, dismiss your feeling, accuse you of being envious and they they immediately push it back on you and a lot of times they do it with anger a lot of times they do it with defensiveness they do it with a lot of venom and they might even like bring up stuff from your past and get angry about it and and just make it so awful for you so that you'll never want to do it ever again the last one that narcissists will often say and, and that is, you can't live without me. This is a tactic that narcissists use. It's all about control. It's aimed to erode your confidence. It's made to make you think that you're so dependent on them or like no one else will ever want you. And it's like sort of like a neuro-linguistic programming technique, like almost like an embedded command. You couldn't live without me. It's just absolutely not true. Anybody can live without the other person if they really wanted to, right? Recognizing these patterns is a cornerstone of empowerment and just knowing that I can do it. I can do whatever I want. Many, many people have escaped being with narcissists and you absolutely can too. Everybody can break the chains of trauma bond or whatever it is that you're dealing with, whether it's a work situation or a family situation or a neighbor, whatever it is that you're dealing with, you can do this. So if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share so that other people can get access to this information as well. Trust in yourself, trust your gut, trust your intuition. Know that what you're feeling is valid, what you're feeling is correct. So like it, share it, make sure that you have subscribed to this channel, hit that notification bell, know that you're on a self-awareness journey, know that every 
revelation is a step toward a brighter future, a step toward the right direction for you. And every piece of knowledge is power. Know that you can help others by sharing this information out as well. Together we grow, together we empower ourselves. And thank you for being a part of this journey. The next video that I want you to watch is when you see this, it's narcissism guaranteed. So I will see you in that next video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do that now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. Then I'll see you in that next video. Remember, today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'm Rebecca Zung. I'll see you in that next video. And God bless you. I'll see you in the next video.